Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a commission for uh, Feruza Balk, uh, playing Dorothy from Return to Oz. I'll be sharing some of the costume making and the face up. So I used a custom print fabric to make this dress, so if you're a supporter over on Patreon, the process on how I did that is in our reward library. So I made the tights using some t-shirt type fabric. It's a little bit thinner and shinier, but basically a spandex type fabric. I uh, later to sort of singe the edges to uh, prevent some fraying. And I'm using this fabric tape. Uh, it's like a thermal or iron-on type of uh, glue to uh, turn down the edges of the top of the tights. It works a little bit better than stitching because it'll give it more stretch. Then I'm just folding them together and stitching down the side. I'm using a hemostat to turn them right side out so that I can add them onto the doll. So to make the dress, I wasn't too precise um, with how I made the costume. I just made a little skirt and then the top separately and stitched them together. So for the face up, I'm using a Madeline Hatter Ever After High Doll. And removed the face paint and the paint from the scalp. And then I'm just using some craft paint to paint the scalp the color of the hair that I'm using. I used some soft alpaca yarn, uh, sort of separated it, and then rooted it with a rooting tool. So I'm using some reference photos from Return to Oz of uh, Feruza Balk to do the face up. And I started with about five coats of Mr. Super Clear Flat. I use the flat rather than the mat because uh, the mat does do um, a decent job, but not as much tooth in my opinion. And it also doesn't add the UV protection that the flat version does. So if you follow me for a while, you know that I usually start with the white of the eyes in the shape that I'm uh, sort of just shape them out using the reference photo and then go back over them with some or shape them out with the watercolor pencil. Going in with the tear duct. My apologies for my hair popping in there. It's funny, I'm looking at this now. My hair is like a bright pink color. So this was quite a while ago that I made this doll. If you follow me over on Instagram, you may have seen this post already. using a Derwent watercolor pencil for darkening up the lower area around the corners of the eyes. And then I'm going, I want to change the face color up to quite a bit lighter. So I'm going in kind of heavy with white as a highlight and then blending it out with some uh, sort of a peachy tone. I typically don't change the color of the skin of the dolls. There's uh, several methods that I've tried. Some of them work uh, to a certain extent, but that's one of the most common questions I'm asked is how to change the color of the doll. And I've uh, been doing this for a very long time and have tried several different ways. And if you're selling your dolls, um, most of them aren't the best option because they it does crack when you paint and there's really no way around that. Um, there is a video that I've done. I did a collab doing a Star Wars doll, um, and in that one, I dyed the doll blue using the um, synthetic dye by uh, what is that? Rit dye synthetic, and it worked pretty well, but it did have its uh, you know some of its issues. But overall, that's probably the best version I have if you're looking to change the actual color of the doll. But um, I rarely, if ever, will do that because I sell my dolls and I don't want there to be issues with the customer. 
So I'm using a custom mix of different shades of peach and red and orange to do a natural lip. Given the shape of these dolls that I use as a base, I'm not looking for it to be an exact face shape or exact mirror image of the character that I'm painting um, because it just wouldn't work with the type of or shape of the face that we're using. So I'm looking for it to be like a surreal representation of the character. So I don't stress out too much if I can't get it to look like the character. So I'm using a very sharp Faber-Castell Art Grip pencil to add some dark corners and then a little bit of darkness to the center of the lips in the crease to make it look like her mouth is slightly opened, very slightly. Darkening up the nostrils a little bit. This is a way that you can capture a character a little bit better if you shape the nostrils to be as close as possible to the nostril shape of the character that you're working on. I've just found that it makes a difference. I'm adding some highlights in the areas where on the reference photo you can see that it's a little bit uh, brighter and then I'm adding some dots where I want the eyebrows just as a guideline to uh, shape them out a little bit. So as a reminder, if you're interested in learning along with me, I share tips and tricks and tutorials, mini video demos and more on my Patreon, as well as monthly art prints mailed to you depending on the tiers that you choose. The link to that is in the description box below. Also, if you're interested in more formal step-by-step -step learning, I have some beginner classes on Skillshare. If you sign up through the link in the description below, you'll get one free month um, of Skillshare free with no obligation to continue. Skillshare is a learning platform where the classes are set up in short, easy to follow lessons. So the link to both of those is in the description below. Adding a little bit of baby hairs to the hairline and highlighting them with white. So prior to the pandemic, I was teaching some in-person classes, mainly in the Charlotte area, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area, and I plan to expand. Um, so once we get through all this, I hope to get out there again and get back to teaching. But one thing that I was teaching in those classes was that throughout this process, I do a, um, 
I do as much as I can on the face and then I'll take it outside and do a few coats of MSC and the Mr. Super Clear and then wait about 10 minutes and then start uh, working again. Um, so it, I really um, just do as much as I possibly can as far as you know the eyebrows, the eyes, the lips, and then when I feel like I want to save that work, I'll go back out and spray it again and then keep going. So I, I do seal it several times in along the process. And you know sometimes if you feel like your doll isn't looking the way you want to, just hang in there if you keep working and keep adding detail. Um, it, it's a little harder to overwork a face up than it is um, most with most art. It's I find that the more detail I add, the more I concentrate on the little bits, that um, the better it looks. As you can see here, I've added probably um, like f I'm on my like fourth or fifth layer of color and adding more detail, and you can kind of see it's just now starting to come to life. So it does take a while, um, a few hours at least, to do a face up. So hang in there if you feel frustrated, like it's not looking the way you want to. Just keep um, taking photos of it and looking at it in the photo and see, well, what is it that I, it just doesn't look right and what can I add? If you're interested in seeing more of my work, you can visit me on Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok. I've just started some little mini videos on TikTok. And if you're interested in purchasing some of my dolls, there are a few dolls and print, art prints in my Etsy. The link is below. I also do commissions. You can contact me via email or direct message on social media to be added to my wait list since I am a little behind on doing commissions. Um, those I'll be picking up soon though. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon. More videos to come. Thanks. Bye.